All right, thank you all for joining. Um, this is our introduction to the ASB. Um, I did send out a, an, an initial uh, rough agenda when we sent out the invitation for this, uh, just so that you would know. So we're gonna be going through a little bit of the history of the ASB, um, some information about staff, board members, um, the process of developing American national standards and ASB documents, um, current status of the ASB, some information on ISO. And then um, just so you guys know, we're gonna pause and I will stop the recording and restart it and hand it over to Linda for a tutorial on the workspace system. And then we will stop the recording again and restart it for a Q&A session. Um, that way, depending on what people are interested in seeing who are not able to attend today, we can have a few different recordings set for everyone. So we will have a few short pauses in the middle today. So uh, my name is Teresa Ambrosius. I'm the secretariat of the ASB. <clears throat> I, um, I am a standards person, not a forensics person. I spent about 20 years working in standards for the petroleum industry prior to coming to the ASB. Uh, so I am here for um, the process of developing standards and, <clears throat> excuse me, and that is one of the reasons that we have such a wonderful board of directors is they are my really link to the forensics industry and the knowledge base that we need. Linda Wilson is also on. She's our technical coordinator. Um, I've been with the ASB for just over five years. I think Linda's at uh, just over three years. Um, I am based in the Washington DC area. Linda is based in Colorado Springs, generally out of the AAFS office out there. Sorry, I'm trying to get my screen to move. All right, so <clears throat> as I mentioned, Linda and I are on the call today. Uh, we are the staff. We also have an ANSI and ISO consultant, Mary McKeel, who is, um, I don't believe she is with us today, but uh, she is also part of the staff. And then we have our AFS board of directors um, out of the AFS membership. Um, our chair is Julie Howe. She is on today and will be giving us an ISO update later. Our vice chair, Jen Limoges. And then our other directors are Ken Ashheim, Greg Berg, Lucy Davis, Pam King, and Linton Mohammed. So a little bit of the background leading to the ASB. A lot of you know this information, but it's good to um, do a little refresher every once in a while. So in the 2009 National Research Council report, Strengthening Forensic Science in the United States, a path forward, the report stated that standards and best practices create a professional environment that allows organizations and professions to create quality systems, policies, and procedures, and maintain autonomy from vested interest groups. Standards ensure desirable characteristics of services and techniques such as quality, reliability, efficiency and consistency among practitioners. Typically, standards are enforced through systems of accreditation and certification, where an independent examiners and auditors test and audit the performance policies and procedures of both laboratories and service providers. In February 2014, the announcement to the um, National Commission on Forensic Science of the Organization of Scientific Area Committees for Forensic Science was launched. And then January 2015, the first OSAC subcommittee meetings occurred. A little more background on the AAFS standards board. So um, it was a, we are a wholly owned subsidi subsidiary of AAFS and as part of the academy, academy's ongoing mission to provide leadership in forensics, its application to the legal system, the academy responded to the diverse forensic community to provide a forum for addressing the needs of quality assurance through standardization. Therefore, AAFS established the ASB. The work of the ASB is done in cooperation with other organizations and OSAC and other organizations outside of that in the forensic community. We were established and staffed in 2015-2016, accredited by the American National Standards Institute in December 2015, and have been partially funded by a grant through the Laura and John Arnold Foundation. We primarily consist of consensus bodies, the board of directors and staff. 
So a little bit of background. So what is a standard? A document that tells you how to do or say or make or test or organize or design something. So there's a lot of different standards out there. A voluntary consensus standard is a private sector standard developed in a specifically defined open and fair environment with generally agreed, agreed upon stakeholders. You're gonna hear the word consensus a lot today and moving forward in your involvement in the ASB, consensus is a big word that you're gonna hear a lot. An American national standard is a standard developed in accordance with the ANSI essential requirements, due process requirements for American national standards. And we are subject to ANSI's unique accreditation of consensus procedures, neutral oversight, approval process, appeals process, and procedural audit. What is a standards developing organization? SDOs are organizations focused on developing, publishing, or disseminating technical standards using a consensus-based standards development process. While well, ANSI coordinates U.S. voluntary standardization activities, the standards are written by hundreds of individual standards developing organization. If the SDO complies with the ANSI essential requirements, which includes openness, balance, due process, and consensus, they apply to become an ANSI accredited standards development or an ASD. There are currently more than 240 organizations that are currently accredited as ASDs. And to date, there are more than 11,000 American national standards comprising the work of thousands of experts from hundreds of ASDs representing practically every industry sector. So for ASB document development, as many of you know, we have a strong collaborative relationship with the Organization of Scientific Area Committees for Forensic Science. Most of our documents do start with a draft developed with, within OSAC. Um, documents may also be created within ASB or submitted from other sources. At the end of the day, though, the ASB consensus bodies are ultimately responsible for the content of the documents. All ASB standards and best practice recommendations are put through the ANSI process to become American national standards. Um, and for those of you wondering the difference between OSAC and the ASB, OSAC is a collaborative body of more than 550 forensic science practitioners and other experts who are representing many levels of government, academia, and industry. <clears throat> OSAC does strengthen a nation's use of forensic science by supporting the development and promulgation of forensic science documentary standards and guidelines. And they do evaluate the existing standards published by SDOs for placement on that OSAC registry. <clears throat> so OSAC introduces draft documents into existing SDOs for formal document development. The draft goes through the SDOs consensus process. The SDOs would provide, publish the newer revised standard, and then OSAC evaluates if a standard meets the technical process, process requirements. And then those documents can be placed on the OSAC registry. Please remember that OSAC does not publish SDO standards. So we mentioned earlier that we are ANSI accredited. So what is ANSI? Um, I have a few slides on this. I'm not gonna read all of the information on it, um, again, we will be distributing these slides in this presentation. Um, and, and ANSI's website is also a great resource and I can provide that information to you as well. But ANSI is the voice of the US standards and conformity assessment system. It empowers its members and constituents to strengthen, sorry, I'm letting people in the meeting. The US marketplace position the global economy while helping to ensure the safety and health of consumers and protection of the environment. Institute, as I mentioned earlier, oversees creation, promulgate, promulgation, and uses of thousands of norms, standards, and guidelines directly impact businesses in every sector in the U.S. ANSI facilitates the development of American national standards by accrediting the procedures of standards developing organizations. Note that ANSI doesn't approve the contents of a standard at the end of the day. When we submit our content to ANSI for a document to become an American national standard, they are approving the process that the document went through, not the actual document. The National Technology and Transfer Advancement Act of 1995 and its implementation directive 
which is OMBA 119, directs federal agencies to utilize voluntary consensus standards where feasible and to participate as appropriate in voluntary consensus standards development activities. Those standards developed in accordance with ANSI's accreditation requirements satisfy obligations incumbent on federal agencies to use or adopt voluntary consensus standards. So why should we use American national standards? Again, all ASB standards and best practice recommendations are put through that ANSI process to become American national standards. <clears throat> that guarantees that the documents have gone through a due process based or a pro due process based in openness, balance, and consensus, that all interested parties can participate in the process. American national standards are recognized worldwide. They protect public interest and they are often adopted into regulations. So the ASB currently has 13 active consensus bodies. Um, we probably have some people on here from almost every one of these groups. So anthropology, bloodstain pattern analysis, CSI, DVI, DNA, dogs and sensors, farms and tool marks, footwear and tire, document examination, friction ridge, MDI, toxicology, and wildlife forensics. We've had over 160 new work proposals submitted. We've published 42 standards and best practice recommendations and additionally four technical reports. And we've had over 45 additional documents posted for public comment um, that's even probably gone up since we put this presentation together. So the ASB is a few governing documents that we abide by. We have our procedures for the development of American national standards. They were approved in 2019 and they are reapproved in 2019 and are currently going through another revision. They contain the ANSI approved interest categories the responsibilities of the ASB board, staff, and consensus bodies, uh, which includes the approval and review of membership and our meeting procedures. It also sets the processes for our standards development, uh, which includes pins, voting, disposition of views and objectives, and appeal procedures, and uh, we'll review most of this in a little bit. We also have a manual for standards, best practice recommendations, and technical reports. Um, some people call this our style guide. It's a little bit more than just a style guide. So that's why we call it the manual. Um, and that's what we provide to the working groups and the consensus bodies um, as a reference for how to write a standard, how to organize a standard, differences between normative and informative, and a lot of different information like that. And the purpose is to ensure that we have a consistent format across all of the standards and to maximize the usability. Um, that can be downloaded from our documents and forms page of our site. <clears throat> and each document does conform to the manual. So our consensus bodies, each one has seven to 25 voting members. The consensus bodies are administered by myself along with the officers of each consensus body, which is a chair, a vice chair, and a secretary who are selected by the consensus body. Consensus body meetings are open to all materially interested and effective individuals, companies, and organizations. Uh, we do um, require applica an application process, as many of you know, because you've been through it. Those applications are reviewed and members are appointed by the members of the Academy Standards Board. The membership balance is very important. Our interest categories, again, conform to the ANSI essential requirements for balance, lack of dominance, and due process, and those are approved by ANSI. We currently have over 300 industry volunteers working on the consensus bodies and our working groups. So we have seven interest categories, academics and researchers, general interests, jurisprudence and criminal justice, organizations, producers, user government, and user non-government. As you all know, when you applied, to become members of ASB consensus body, you had, you had to choose an interest category for us to put everybody in. And again, this gets back to the fact that no more than 33% um, of any single interest category can make up a consensus body. And that's a way for us to guarantee that we have um, a lot of interest represented on every consensus body. 
We do have some consensus bodies where we have not filled every category. We do outreach to try to get people into those um, positions. Often getting someone in the producer category is a little tough, So, but we do our best to make sure that we have representation from each group on our consensus bodies. So the primary functions of a consensus body are, of course, creating and approving by consensus forensic standards, best practice recommendations, and technical reports. Considering comments, views, and objections to ballots and resolving all negative comments received in connection with the development of documents. So that is both public comments and comments submitted for a ballot on a document. Uh, it is also the responsibility of a consensus body to respond to requests for interpretations. Consensus body meetings are open to the public. Meetings are posted on the public calendar, which can be found on the consensus body page of the ASB website. We used to have the Zoom links posted on that page. We took them down when um, a lot of people had, uh, what were they called, Zoom crashers or things like that. So if you know anyone who's interested in participating in a consensus body meeting as an observer, uh, they just need to send an email to asb at aafs.org or to Linda or myself directly, and we will give them that information to join the meeting. Again, we just no longer post that link publicly on the ASB website. So we have working groups that function under the, their subsets of the consensus bodies. They work on the documents or issues assigned by a consensus body. Right now, most of our working groups are specifically working on documents. We have had some in the past that were issue based, usually resolve an issue, and then we shut down that working group when that's taken care of. They develop the draft documents, which are then considered and voted upon by the full consensus bodies. The working group meetings are not open, but there is no limitation on the number of participants and the participants do not need to be members of the consensus body. We have quite a few working groups where we have brought in um, people from the SWIGs or OSAC who worked on the initial versions of these documents and might have some background information on the documents that the members of the consensus body or the working group don't have. And it's actually been a great resource and it also lightens the load of the members of the consensus body so that we can have good sized working groups without just pulling members of consensus bodies to do that work. <clears throat> so right now we have three types of documents. We have standards, best practice recommendations and technical reports. <clears throat> Standards established, consensus, are established by consensus and approved by the body that provides for common and repeated use rules, guidelines, or characteristics activities for the result, aimed at the achievement of optimum degree in order of a given context. <clears throat> Standards are generally requirements, so you find many more shall statements in a standard. Best practice recommendation are generally that they are recommendations um, and procedures rec recommending optimal approaches or options. Again, there are some shall statements in our best practice recommendations, but they are generally should statements. And our technical reports do not set requirements or recommendations. They are explanatory or informational documents. Right now, most of our technical reports are terminology documents that we have out there. We are looking at modifying these three types of documents a little bit. And once we do that, we'll offer a webinar to further explain any changes in the types of documents that we are producing. So the overall document process. Again, we follow an ANSI accredited procedures for our document process. A new work proposal submitted to and approved by the consensus body. The new work proposal can come from anyone. It can come from a consensus body member, it can come from an OSAC member, and it, or it can come from someone outside of any of those organizations who feels like they have an idea for a standard and a concept, perhaps even a draft document written up that they think would become a good standard or best practice recommendation. Those new work proposals are approved by the ASB to ensure alignment with the overall mission of the organization. The new work proposal is then submitted to ANSI for something called a PINS, and I'll get into that in a few minutes. Consensus body develops the document with the support of the working groups. Document goes through public review and is voted on by all consensus body members. The consensus body or working group re reviews and adjudicates all of the comments. If there's no unresolved negative comments, the, document is forwarded, the documentation is forwarded to ANSI for approval as an ANS. 
and currently we do publicly post all of our documents on our website for downloading. I'm not going to go through this. This is kind of a general chart of the way that the ASB process and most standards process work. You can see that some of it can be quite circular. If a ballot doesn't pass, it needs to go back to the consensus body. The document does for revisions. Um, if there are the document, even if it passes and there are substantial revisions made to the document and the comment resolution process, it will need to go back through that process again. So if you've been to the um, page on our website that lists all of the documents out for public comment, you'll often see recirculations. And those are documents that have already been through the process once and have had revisions made based on those public comments or ballot comments, and it's going back through the process again. We do have some documents that I believe have gone up through four rounds of public comment, so it can kind of keep going for a while until both the consensus body and our public commenters and we've resolved all the comments and have a complete and finalized document at the end. So back to the new work proposal. Once the ASB has approved that new work proposal for consensus body work, it, the information it is submitted to ANSI for publication and standards action for a 30 day notification. And that is called the PINS process, Project Initiation Notification System. If we don't hear anything from anybody and, and by anybody, standards action goes mostly to people in the standards community. And so it's a way for us to announce, hey, we as the ASB are starting work on this document. If you feel that you have a document that is an American national standard that already has that content, please let us know so that we can either work together to make sure that they're not duplicative, or um, it might be, an, might be an option that one organization withdraws one of the documents. So again, this is the ANSI project, Project Initiation Notification System, the PINs. Okay, so once the document has gone through the PINs process, and the working group has decided, has gone through a document and finalized it. It is approved by the consensus body by a procedural vote to go out for ballot and public comment. This is an essential part of the standards development process. The documents and comment template are posted on the ASB website. They're out for a 45 day public comment period. And when we say public comment, we fully mean public comment. We accept comments from anybody who is interested in sending the information to us. We do a 30 day ballot that runs concurrently with com public comment period. We generally set it up so that the, um, the ballot period starts 15 days after that public comment period so that they end on the same day. Consensus body members, when they vote, can vote yes, yes with comment, no with comment or abstain with comment. Yes, if they vote, just wanna vote yes, there's no comment required. A no or an abstain vote, it is required that the consensus body member state why they are voting no on the document. The ASB procedures require approval by two thirds majority excluding abstentions to publish a document. What that means is that if a consensus body member feels that they don't have the knowledge to vote on a document, they can abstain and that abstention is not part of that two thirds majority that we need to count to publish a document. So when re we receive public comments or ballot comments, generally the process is that we send those comments to a working the working group that worked on the document initially to resolve the comments. We have had documents where we've received a few hundred comments that need to be resolved. Sometimes if they're all on this, many comments are on one section of the document, it's easy to resolve them. Um, but we do have some comment resolution processes that have lasted quite a long time because Sometimes in a two hour meeting, resolving comments, you can still only get through 10 or 15 comments, depending on how technical those comments on those sections are. <clears throat> Once the comments are resolved, they are taken back to the consensus body for the consensus body to approve what the working, how the working group has resolved those comments on the document and how it has revised the document. If the document is substantial or technical changes based on those comments, document goes out for recirculations. When a document goes out for recirculation, new comments can only be made on the revised sections of the document, not the full document. 
And again, once process has been completed, which is as many recirculation as needed to make sure all the comments are resolved and no substantial or technical changes are made anymore to the document. Um, the ballot results, comment resolution, and proof of outreach are submitted to ANSI for final approval to publish as an American national standard. All American national standards must be revised, reaffirmed, or withdrawn after five years. So revised is updated content. Reaffirmed means its consensus body looks at the document and says nothing in the industry has changed. Let's just vote to reaffirm it and the document can stay that way for five more years. Or the consensus body may look at a document and say, you know what, this is no longer applicable. Either the content has been moved into other documents or it is no longer necessary to have this standard out there in the industry and the consensus body can choose to withdraw the document. Document revisions and reaffirmations go through the same voting and public comment process. So even if nothing has changed in a document and the consensus body chooses to reaffirm it, it still goes through the same process. A document can be revised or withdrawn earlier than five years. So if a document is published and something drastically changes in the industry, consensus body can start working on it immediately and get it out there as soon as possible. And if a revision process is going past five years, perhaps it's a document that has very substantial updates that are needed, um, we can work with ANSI to get a two-year extension on that American national standard. So getting back to the manual for standards, best practice recommendations and technical reports. Um, you guys will see a lot of this, especially um, once you join working groups. Um, if Linda and I are joining, uh, running a working group meeting, especially if it's a new working group, there's a good chance we're gonna have that document open at the same time as the, um, the standard or BPR that you're working on, just as far as reference, so that um, everyone can see the differences um, between say normative and informative, information on copy my, copyrights and patents. Um, and again, a little bit of information on the formatting of the document, though generally Linda and I take care of all, a lot of that. So you'll notice that uh, there is often a section in the standards called a conformity assessment. Conformity assessment for requirements are written in accordance with the neutrality principles such that conformity can be assessed by a first party, manufacturer, supplier, or second party, user, purchaser, or third party, an independent body. Um, many of you being in the forensics industry are very aware of audits. Um, and so very often if a document is intended for an audit in a lab it might have a conformity assessment section at the end to give additional information on how that conformity assessment um, should be applied to that document there's also information in the manual on inclusions of patents in american national standards there's no objection in principle to drafting an american national standard that might include an essential patent claim but there is a lot of information and we do follow the ANSI patent policy that um, you would want to get information from the patent holder that they would not uh, charge every single user of the standard to use that information that standard if the patent is in there. Um, it's quite complicated, but again, we do have that posted on our website. So if you want information on the patent policy, we can give you that information. And as far as copyright, ASB documents are protected by a variety of federal and state copyright laws. And we do post that ASP disclaimer in every single ASB document. So as I mentioned earlier, um, our uh, ASB board chair, Julie Howe, um, is in attendance in the meeting. Um, I'm gonna find her here and unmute her or Julie, if you want to, un there she is, she's unmuted. So I'm going to let her uh, discuss the ISO process a little bit. So I just want to extend a warm welcome and um, say that we very much appreciate all of the, the hard work that you guys are going to be doing on the consensus bodies. Um, I am a medical legal death investigator by background. I'm not a lab scientist, um, but I do want to explain to you that ASB is involved in international uh, creating and, and helping publish international um, forensic science standards. So the International Organization for Standardization um, or ISO has a technical committee 272 for forensic sciences. 
And like I said, they are developing and publishing international consensus-based um, forensic science standards that pertain to both laboratory and field-based um, methods and techniques. And two, two of the members, um, two of the US members uh, are also on this call. So Robert Thomas and Karen Rezek are also members of the, um, the US Technical Advisory Group, which is the, um, the US group that belongs to ISO. So the American National Standards Institute or ANSI is the US um, national body that um, is a member of the ISO and, and through them, they have developed this technical advisory group or a TAG um, that is administered by ASCLAD um, where we've got participants from a variety of organizations, including ASB, including NIST, including the IAI, including, um, oh gosh, um, uh, I can't even think off the top of my head right now, ASCLAD, um, DBFA, um, Karen or, or Robert, if you can think of other ones. I can't think right now off the top of my head, but there's 26 people on the US tag. So we are developing five reports. Um, we are currently working on um, three, four, and five. So one and two have already been published. And it is about um, detecting and collecting physical evidence analyzing and interpreting that evidence, and then the reporting of the analytical findings. So our, our work is ongoing, um, but I just wanted to let you know that the ASB is represented on the international level as well, or is involved in the inter international level as well. That's all. Sorry, I'm trying to unmute myself. Thank you, Julie. I really appreciate it. Um, so I'm going to take a moment here.